Yes, how are you doing? Welcome back. I hope you're all well and I hope you're having a great day. So we are back on the racing green and we're going to start the restoration, which is really, really exciting. The first things we need to do, though, is have a bit of a tidy up, get the other cars covered up and get them sort of packed up for the winter. The date today, so this video will go out probably a couple of weeks uh, later than it's filmed, is the 19th of September. And the plan is to get the rest restoration done and all finished over the next six months. So let's see how it goes. Um, it's hard to know where to start, but I think we're going to start on the seals on the car. Really just so I can do a good corrosion assessment of the floors and everything like that. Inner seals, look up inside the seals. I actually think it's going to be a little bit tricky or a little bit more difficult because the seals are not that bad. They do need replacing, but they're not completely rotten. It's not got over seals on it. So it might just make them a little bit more difficult to remove. So anyway, let me get the other cars covered up. Let's get the workshop sorted out and then we can get started on the racing green. Right then, that was a lot of faffing around. I've not covered Sprout up yet because I've tested the battery and the battery's a little bit low, so we're gonna fully charge that before I disconnect the battery and cover it up. Um, so I've got some containers out to store bits in. Uh, PL is nicely covered up. I've got that full cover underneath and a cover over the top. And uh, stuff will get put on the roof, so I've just put some stuff on there to protect the roof a little bit. Uh, so next job is to get all the interior out now because we're going to be welding this car It's a really sensible idea. It doesn't take long to get an interior out of a mini uh, And basically remove anything that's flammable. So as careful as you want to be when you're welding sparks and uh, bits of weld going all sorts of different places and if you can remove all the flammable bits it's less to worry about so we're going to get all this interior stripped out. I'm not going to time lapse it. I think we'll just, uh, I'll snap my fingers and it'll be done. Um, you know, yeah, I don't want to bore you. So let's get the interior all stripped out. And then later on in the video, we'll get it jacked up on this side and we can have a first look at the seals on this side. Right, all stripped. I'll be honest with you, because I always make it look easier on camera. That took me about four hours, and I'll get into why in a moment. So obviously we've got everything out, got the seats out, got the carpets out. I am missing, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to need bits for this car. So the only bit of sound deadening in this car is that piece there, which is a tow board piece. And as you can see, most of it is missing. Um, and there is no sound deadening up on the inside of the inner wings. So if anyone knows where I can get them, please do let me know. Strip the subframe off the front seats because I'm going to send them away and see what can be done with them. I don't want them to be perfect, actually. I don't mind that there's a bit of patina on them, but I'd like to get the bad badges changed. Some of the stitching started coming apart and um, 
yeah, I don't mind a bit of patina. Um, I don't want them looking brand new, but I've got to be careful what I spend. I've got the heater matrix out, isn't leaking or anything, but we'll give it an overhaul. And then everything else, I tend to keep, so this is my box for interior bits. So this goes on there. And yeah, that keeps all, all our interior bits nice, clean and tidy and in one place. Um, I have got the dash out, that won't be going back in. It's uh, very cracked up and everything like that. The steering wheel, I've actually uh, fitted the steering wheel off Project Bruce on there. So Dave who bought Project Bruce off me, gave me the old steering wheel back. Um, and I've just used it in the car just for maneuvering it around and that sort of thing. Now what I got stuck into, what took a little bit longer was this. Oh, by the way, you didn't see that bit. Ignore that bit. I'm not allowed to talk about that. That's coming up in a future episode. Don't tell anyone, keep it a secret. Um, so it's got a Sigma S2 alarm in it. Um, yeah. <laughs> and it's had a big stereo install in it in the past. I think it's probably had fog lights on the front of it as well. So I had to trace out all this loom, get it back to original, and then of course uh, work out where they're cutting to uh, get it running again. So that's what took me a little bit longer, but it's done now. Um, I still need to tidy up the loom in places. Uh, let's go and have a look inside the car, because I don't think, we might have had the bet, we've had a look at it without the carpets out. Let's go and have a look again and remind ourselves anyway, and ignore that, you didn't see that. Already fit the bucket seat. So like I say, there's a steering wheel off Bruce. Um, yeah, I've had to make some repairs to the ignition switch here. I've bypassed the heater matrix for the moment. Um, and the only bit I haven't got out, which I do still want to get out, oh, I need to take the visors out and the mirror. I take them out because it just stops them getting absolutely filthy when you're restoring stuff. Uh, windscreen's got to be out for the top dash rail, so I'll take that out at a later date. Um, as I think we've talked about before, the floor in here isn't too bad. Obviously, it's had some inner seal repairs there. Front floor pan's probably one I want doing, but the rest of the inner seal looks all right. Back of the inner seal looks fine. Inside the door bins are fine. One point that's worth noting when you're stripping it out, remember to take the foam bits out of the inside of the door bins and at the back there because they always catch fire and it takes a little spark. Um, we can see more closely now, this has got a quick shift on it. I'm not sure whether it's a CAD quick shift. It's, it, it's probably not, it doesn't matter anyway. It is a quick shift, it's this piece here. Someone asked me how it works. All it basically does is, oh, I can't take it fully out at the moment, but on the bottom of there, you can see a ball. Uh, that fits inside a socket inside there and that transmits the backwards forwards left and right movement along to the gearbox so uh, on a quick shift I think the ball is further down the, the pivot point adjusts basically so the pivot point is yeah the pivot point on a quick shift basically means it takes less movement backwards and forwards up the top to move at the bottom, if that makes sense. So yeah, the pivot point is adjusted. Uh, the ball's probably further down. Yeah, so a, a small amount of movement on the top makes a big amount of movement on the bottom. And all that does is it just makes it um, less movement between gear changes. It makes it all feel a little bit tighter. Obviously, it can mean it takes a bit more mechanical effort because of the, the lever points, but it does make it feel much, much nicer. I am a fan of quick shifts. Uh, what else we got in here? So the near side front, again, we've got some inner seal repairs, front of the floor, bit of dodgy repairs there. God knows what's happened to that rear door bin. Inside of the rear bins, again, look pretty good. Again, I've removed all the foam. Um, you can probably see a little bit better now. The massive great big crack at the bottom of the toe board. You can also see weld burn marks in here where it's, someone's probably plated from the outside. So we're gonna have to probably replace a big chunk of that toe board um, and then aside from that obviously in the back here it's a bit of a mess where those big speakers have been so I don't know what I'm going to do about that yet let me know your thoughts 
Right then, so a good bit of work. Let's get it back inside. Let's get it on the ramps on this side and we'll have a look at what this feels like. Right then, first time we've got to have a proper look underneath. I mean, I've got down on my hands and knees before and had a look and I've spotted some things which didn't look good. First one, I know it's hard to see from here at the moment, but um, people will be wondering why I ordered a subframe without having even taken it out yet. But if you look over that side, on that bottom leg of the subframe that has actually been plated the whole way long it's like a, it's had a repair section uh welded over the top of the original so yeah i think this subframe although it looks pretty solid i don't want to refit a subframe which has been plated like that um but at the back here so just look at that metal brake pipe that's shot but that'll get replaced anyway the actual seal at the back here is pretty good. I've got my corrosion assessment tool, pokey screwdriver. Um, this is the original seal on the car, still got the original bung there. It's pretty solid at the back here. From what I can see, heel board looks okay, but obviously we won't know until the subframe comes out. But in general, it's pretty good looking. And if I go along the stuff at the back here, I mean, I'll clean this all wire wheel it all off to have a proper look. Uh, there we go, I've made a hole. Oh, I feel better now. <laughs> and another hole. Um, it's not that bad though. I mean, this is the original, original seal. And the good bit is it means it won't have been mullered along the top here before. It'll only have one lip there instead of about two or three, like what generally happens with minis. But in general, it's pretty solid. I mean, if you want it to be tight, you could probably patch those little bits there. But this is not about being tight. Now it gets worse as we go towards the front. So let me move around. So never a surprise on a Mini, the closer you get to the front, the worse it gets. So as we come along here, there is a plate welded here. Uh, there's another plate there. There's a plate there. There's a plate there. There's a plate there. There's lots of gum over there. However, it is solid. There oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, that makes me feel better. Yeah, that ain't good. Floor. Like I say, I don't know what's going, it's got plates on the outside here. Um, can you see this big plate here now? That table plate, that's on solid mounted subframe, which is, won't have helped it at all. Uh, big plate welded there, so front subframe's gonna have to come out, that's all gonna have to be redone. I've just noticed the battery cable's been taped up as well, so it's gonna want a battery cable. Um, But to be honest, yeah, big hole there. Um, the rest of the seal's pretty solid, seeing it's the original seal. It 
it's uh, when when minis get like this, so it's a bit like archaeology. You just have to dig away and peel back the layers and uh, get back to something that looks original. So, um, yeah, that's that side. I guess the next step really is going to be cleaning all of this off. Uh, it's how much I just cut straight away, I might. Uh, to be honest, I might just slit along the top there like I normally do. We'll get that out of sill off. And then, and then start cleaning up the rest to find out what's gone on at the front here. I think, to be honest, I might end up having to replace... I mean, the floor pan from sort of there is spot on. I might end up having to replace this corner of the floor pan. in the wings like it don't sound bad but obviously the a panel and all the front ends gonna come off anyway um, this side I don't know what's going on with this side but this side I, I think uh, I mean the doors damaged there the a panels all bent out I and mean, the a panels gone to be honest I don't quite know what's happened there Maybe the door has come off the check strap at some point and bent round into the A panel. Or maybe the wheels come off. Um, I'm not quite sure. Uh, anyway, next episode we'll be cutting this sill off, cleaning up a little bit more and uh, getting a bit more into the restoration, finding out what we've got to deal with. So thanks for watching this week. Please remember if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, please do consider subscribing and I'll catch you again soon. Without further ado, it's time to start cutting! cutting.